celebrate Creative Source reaching 100,000 subscribers, I've reached out to some of my favorite partners so that we can say thank you to you for all of your amazing support. For seven days in a row, I'll be launching giveaways for a total of 24 prizes worth over $6,000 so that you can get the chance to have your hands on some great studio gear and software. Each video also has a bonus secret code inside for you to get extra entries, so make sure you watch the whole thing. Today's prizes come from Audient. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. When I think of Audient, I think of high quality, pristine mic preamps. And I've got to tell you, one of my favorite pieces of gear in this studio is the Audient ASP 800, which absolutely epitomizes this. But I first got to know them when I made a video about their Evo 4 audio interface. Now this is really unique and a very brave concept, a very different form factor, and it's got some great features for the beginner. A little later on, for a few more inputs, I tried out the Evo 8. Let's take a quick look at that now. The Evo 8 is a four in, four out interface, recording with sample rates up to 96 kilohertz, and it connects to your computer via a USB-C connector. The inputs consist of four XLR combos, meaning you can either plug in XLRs or quarter inch jacks. Each of these has 48 volts of phantom power when connected to a USB-C host, or is available for two channels with a USB-A host. On the front, we have an instrument level quarter inch jack input. This overrides input one. This input is great for things like electric guitars. In terms of outputs, we have four quarter inch jacks on the back. This would be perfect for connecting up to two sets of monitors, but could also be used for things like effects loops or guitar reamping. On the front, we have two headphone outputs, one connected to output channels one and two, and the other to three and four. This is great because it means we can have separate mixes for engineers and artists. More about that when we look at the software. The few controls on the Evo 8 combine to give us a lot of functionality. This is due to the large multifunction knob at its center. For example, select one of the output buttons and the knob controls that output's volume. Press one of the input buttons and you can control that channel's gain, as well as switching its phantom power off and on. Press two channels at the same time and they're stereo linked. Long press on a channel and you'll mute it with the button flashing to indicate its status. So one of the more significant releases I covered in 2021 was when Audion upgraded their ID4 and ID14 interfaces to the Mark II versions. People absolutely love these interfaces, especially for the mic preamps, the build quality, and just the general design of them. Now, I still use the ID14 Mark II as a regular part of my workflow in this studio. Let's see what I had to say about them in the video. Both models have an updated look and are quite possibly the least plastic interfaces I've ever had in my hands. Not only is the casing entirely metal, but so are the knobs. That and the gun metal finish means I can't help but resort to the cliche, built like a tank. And if ever some interfaces deserved it, it's these. Both of the interfaces now use a USB-C connection. The extra power provided by this connection type arguably provides better overall audio quality and benefits such as louder headphone outputs. They also both use the same mic preamps as those used in the Audient ASP 8024HE console, featuring ultra low noise and distortion with according to Audient some analog warmth. Both interfaces also have a JFET instrument input at the front, which adds a little color and distortion to the signal, making it perfect for electric guitars, basses, and even synthesizers. On the ID4, this is the second input, but on the ID14, this overrides the rear mic input one. Both models also have two headphone jacks at the front, and this is an upgrade for the ID14 from version one. However, do note that both outputs receive the same signal when used simultaneously. These headphone outputs even worked well with my 250 ohm Bayer Dynamic headphones, which are renowned for needing a little bit more juice to sound good. Both models also have a volume encoder, which can be pressed to invoke other functions. On the ID4, this is assigned to the dim function, whereas on the ID14, it can have a number of functions assigned to it. 
There are some slight differences in the controls for these models. The ID14 has a headphone button which enables you to control headphone volume independently using the encoder and the ID4 has a monitor mix control to blend inputs with your door whereas the ID14 does this with software. More on that later. The ID4 has its switch for 48 volts of phantom power at the rear, whilst the ID14 has these on top. And by the way, these switches may look a little delicate, but they're actually very sturdy, and it would be hard to imagine accidentally switching them. But it's at the rear where we start to get a sense of the big differences in these two units. The ID4 has one combo input to attach either an XLR or quarter inch jack and the two balanced outputs for monitors. With the ID14, the difference is massive. Of course, it has two combo inputs for its main two input channels, but this can be expanded to 10 by connecting a compatible preamp via its ADAC connection. This is pretty unusual, if not unique, for interfaces in this price range, and it's worth taking seriously if you intend to expand your recording capabilities in the future. In terms of outputs, there's some more good news, as we find four outputs at the rear, giving us options such as extra monitors, effects loops, or even guitar reamping. This is a big step up from the previous generation of ID14. However, it's true that for both models, there's been significant improvements under the hood, so to speak. Check out the link in the description for my comparison to the previous generation. Now, if you're tempted by any of these audio interfaces at all, then I have to tell you, today may be your lucky day, because Audion have generously offered three prizes for this giveaway. They have offered one Evo 8 audio interface, one ID4 Mark II audio interface, and one ID14 Mark II audio interface. That's three prizes all in all. Now in a moment, I'm gonna tell you how you enter for this giveaway. But first of all, let's just have a quick chat about what you don't need to do to enter this giveaway. So there's a number of things you don't have to do to enter this competition. You don't have to subscribe to this channel, you don't have to leave a comment down below, and you don't have to like this video. Now if you do think this channel could be useful to you in the future, do go ahead, subscribe, and ring the bell. If you wanna leave a comment down below and tell me what you like about these audio interfaces, I'd love to hear from you on that. And if you just wanna show the love, go ahead and like the video, but you definitely don't have to do any of those things to enter the competition. So what do you have to do? So to enter this giveaway, simply visit homestudiogiveaway.com slash audience, or you can follow the link for that in the description down below. Follow the instructions there to get a number of different ways to enter and give your more chances. I look forward to seeing you there. I want to say a big thank you to Audion for supplying the great prizes today and also a massive thank you to all of the people who have helped me get to 100,000 subscribers and I'll see you in the next giveaway video.